right, so earlier on, we were up here on the fourth floor when we were experiencing category four force winds. And we zoomed down from that side of the hallway and all you could see was the wind buffeting all this structure and couldn't tell if there was anything left. And now we're in the eye and we can see there's absolutely nothing left. Oh, look at Whoa! That. 2016 gave us Hurricane Matthew, 2017 we had Harvey and Irma, and in 2018 we had Florence and Michael. Most people worked Harvey and Irma, and even though we had landfalling hurricanes in 2018, few people were working those storms. So what's the deal? How can you make a living as a property independent adjuster doing hurricanes? Shout out to Max Olson for providing that stock footage that he shot of those hurricanes and that storm footage. 2016 was the first season since 2012 where we had a major landfalling hurricane that caused enough damage to put adjusters to work. That's three years where there were zero hurricanes or events that were big enough to put anybody on the independent side to work. And even though we had two hurricanes in 2018, it's, they still weren't big enough to really put a whole lot of people to work then either. And a quick disclaimer for those of you who think that we are kind of mercenaries and we just, you know, can't wait for disaster to happen. The thing about it is, is that hurricanes, wildfires, earthquakes, hailstorms, windstorms, winter, all that stuff, those things happen whether we want them to or not. The independent adjuster industry exists to help people get back on their feet as quickly as possible. So if you're new and you heard about this job from somebody who went to Florida to work Hurricane Irma and they came home eight weeks later with $80,000 in their bank account, I'm gonna shoot it to you straight. Independent catastrophe adjusters doing property do not make their livings from hurricanes. Why? Because hurricanes that cause any kind of damage are random and relatively few and far between. The strongest storm in history will be remembered by exactly nobody if it veers off to sea and dissipates without ever making landfall anywhere. So how do CAT IAs make money? We plan our year around the Midwest hail season, and that includes everything from Texas all the way up to Minnesota and from Colorado over to Ohio. Experienced veteran independent adjusters who do CAT do not count on hurricanes. If one happens, then we can we consider it to be gravy. And the same thing goes for earthquakes and wildfires. The most money I've ever made as a catastrophe adjuster happened in a year when there was not one single landfalling hurricane. Can there be slow years for hail too? Absolutely. But there's always something going on somewhere. And the more experience you get and the higher you get on the first call list, the better your chances of getting deployed on really small events that where they only need one or two adjusters and not 50 adjusters. I've made my living for many, many years being either the only adjuster or one, of, one adjuster out of two or three and spending the summer in little places like Abilene, Kansas or Hannibal, Missouri or Kearney, Nebraska. Places that nobody's really ever heard of but that are big enough to support me running hail claims all summer long. So as far as your licensing goes, I'm always going to tell you to make getting licensed like this so-called golden ticket New York, which, or coastal states, make those secondary. The licenses that I would tell you to get to get you working right away are gonna be Texas, Oklahoma, Minnesota, and Indiana. Those four licenses, because every other state in the hail zone, Colorado, Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, North and South Dakota, Wisconsin, Illinois doesn't even have an adjuster's license. The, the, very, the, the large population centers in the Midwest will get a lot of hail. Denver, Colorado gets a lot of hail. Dallas, Texas gets a lot of hail. So you, you want those licenses. Those are the core licenses I would get. And then I would pick up Florida and then I'd start picking up coastal licenses after that. But I wouldn't be getting 19 licenses. You don't need every license in every state. Even though the IA firms will tell you that you need to get licenses in every state. For you, you don't really. You just need to get licenses in places that are you're gonna probably work, which is gonna be the Midwest and it's gonna be Texas. But in case they have a big cat, they wanna be able to say, yes, we've got all these adjusters who have licenses in New York. So I encourage you to make the coastal state licenses secondary and concentrate on getting your Texas and Midwest licenses that I listed above, and then Florida. Also, before you get training as a drone pilot or you get your part 107 or you get rope and harness or you get all this, this other kind of stuff, I would highly recommend that you get some damage identification training and really kind of the, the gold standard for our industry is Hague Engineering and the link is in the description below. Hague Engineering has damage certifications that you can get that will help you become a better adjuster 
and be more marketable. So to sum up, can you make a lot of money doing hurricanes? Absolutely, and which is why it draws so many people to this, this business. Are you going to make money every single year from hurricanes? You're absolutely not. And again, like I said, we had three years in a row with a bunch of hurricanes. Four years in a row would be, I mean, three years was unprecedented as far as my memory goes. Four years? The weather's random, so who knows? But I'm not holding my breath, and I'm gonna tell you to go do hail storms because that's where the money's really at it, and not sit around and wait, for, you know, say no to a hail deployment when you really wanna get a hurricane deployment. Do not do that. Don't do that. They call you, they want you to go work hail, you go work hail. They call you and they want you to go work sewer, sewer backup in Idaho, you go. You say yes to everything that they call you on because the chances of there being a hurricane are pretty slim. If there's a huge event like Katrina or Irma, they'll start pulling people and throwing them on those hurricanes. You're not gonna miss a hurricane if you say yes to other deployments. So don't say no to any deployment because you're waiting for a hurricane. You might as well go to Las Vegas and just throw your money out the window of the car. Don't forget to check out Adjuster TV on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash Adjuster TV. If you got some value out of this video, I'd love for you to share this video and hit the like button if you liked it. And for more independent adjuster videos, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and have a great storm. This is Adjuster TV.